The bugs don't stop here. Green and growing. That is the voice of your host today on The Good Word with Goodwill, Vincent Goodwill. Yes, I was singing terribly, but I was singing terribly for a reason because we are here in the immediate aftermath of the Damian Lillard trade to the Milwaukee Bucks sliding in like a thief in the night, John Horst. Also sliding in, the great Dan Devine sliding in, co-host of No Cap Room. Dan, how are you doing today? I'm a lot better now that I heard you start the show that way. That you, I, know you, I understand you got to be self-deprecating. You got to kind of play it down. That was beautiful. That was the best an intro to my show has ever sounded. So I, I love that. I love that for us. And I love that, that we're starting off this momentous podcast discussing the, maybe the biggest move of the NBA summer uh, on such, you know, sonorous notes. I love that. Well, A, that's not really how I sing when I'm singing in the shower, but for <laughs> that cheesy Milwaukee Bucks music from the might have been the 70s that we found. And if if you're on YouTube, you probably can't hear it. But if you're listening to <laughs> us on any other platform, you probably heard that song in the background. Let's get to the details, y'all. The Bucks getting Damian Lillard sliding in. The Portland Trailblazers saying F your couch to <laughs> Pat Riley, to the boats in South Beach, to everybody that wanted to see Damian Lillard there. F your couch. And he got Drew Holiday, he got DeAndre Aiden from the Phoenix Suns, Tumani Kamara, he got a 2029 first round pick from the Bucks. He got swap rights on 28 and 30. And also, of course, Drew Holiday probably never going to play a minute for the Portland Trail Blazers, which means if you're Pat Riley, you got to pivot quickly. If you are the Philadelphia 76ers, you got to pivot quickly. In comes the Phoenix Suns. Yusef Nurkic, Sarah Little, Keon Johnson, Grayson Allen. Dan, just beyond the obvious, what initially stands out to you? I mean, the first thing that stood out to me was the idea that like bullying works. This was Giannis went to and was was uncompromising about it. Was very clear in the media first interview with Tanya Ganguly at the New York Times last month. Then a uh, podcast appearance, I believe, that was the Forty Eight Minutes podcast. Um, where he was asked the question, like, do you uh, see yourself, you know, staying with the Bucks for the rest of your career? And he was, you know, in no uncertain terms said, like, I need to know that this, the organization is as committed to championships as I am. If I don't feel like everybody is pulling in the same direction and the same, you know, putting the same effort in, then I won't feel co- I, I won't sign here long term. I'm about winning. And then the Bucks respond to that by going and getting arguably. I mean, I, and I've written about this when the, the Dame to Miami stuff was sort of first starting a while back. Arguably the second best offensive player in the entire NBA last season behind uh, Nikola Jokic. Damian Lillard was not only fourth in the league in scoring at 32.2 points per game, but just the the geometry of, a, of an offense changes with the way he shoots from deep, the volume that he shoots from, the way that he can uh, pair with a, a role man in the two-man game. All of these things that as a primary ball handler and a pick-and-roll shot creator, you didn't really have in Milwaukee. You know, Drew Holiday has been a sensational player, was an integral part of their championship team, but... Uh, more a, a high-end defensive player that sometimes struggled to run the offense late in games to the point where you wind up having a lot of Chris Middleton as, as your primary creator. Now you've got two options that you feel comfortable with with Giannis screening there in the middle. It just adds so much more variety, so much more punch to that offense. And you know, you're telling Giannis, not only are we getting this high-level player, we're getting him with four years left on his deal. We mm-hmm. are going to extend for the... Th- this is going to be this partner for you for the rest of your prime. And also... If we wind up in a situation where this isn't working out exactly the way we want to, we have shown that we are you know, committed to going to the mattresses as long as as far as we can go in whatever direction we need to go to put a winner around you. The hope now, I think, if you're the Bucks, is saying either this gets Giannis to sign on the dotted line this summer or next summer with the long term extension. But you you have proven true to your word. And that is exactly the outcome that Giannis Adetokounmpo wants. He has a better chance of winning the NBA championship today than he had before he sat down and talked to the New York Times. And I think when you're a superstar and you're trying to swing it, that's the way you're trying to swing it. I think it's it's multiple tentacles here. And I think all of your points on the floor, intangibly off the floor, the relationship that a player has with the front office is going to be critical, especially for a guy like Giannis, who you wondered if he yearned for greener pastures beyond Milwaukee, just from a life standpoint. And who knows if that if that actually changes or not. But like you said, Damian Lillard 
the the only concerns that I have is this, and, and I'm not not here to pour cold water because I think we'll be in Milwaukee for the NBA Finals. I, I've been thinking that for the last three years. Okay, sure, so right. I don't think this is going to change anything. Dame played 58 games last year. Chris Middleton played 33 games last year with the knee and coming off, starting off with the uh, left wrist injury that he suffered in the 22 playoffs was pretty much cost him a trip to the finals. So you wonder from a health standpoint, a depth standpoint, you know, your second and third best players, are they going to be available consistently? Giannis also missed time starting those little nagging injuries starting to add up. But all that said, Dan, I make that deal 10 times out of 10. John Horse coming in, sweeping in like a thief in the night, saying, and, and then he, here's the other part of it too. Not only did he say F your couch to the uh to the Eastern Conference and to the Miami Heat and to, you know, the prospect of anybody trying to s- swoop in and take Giannis out from out of his hands. You know what else he said F your couch to? Luxury tax, second aprons. Because, <laughs> baby, let me tell you, they're going to be paying some taxes in Milwaukee. Okay? And for those who have not seen it yet, Damian Lillard released released a tweet or an X or whatever you want to call it. You know, basically said excited for his new chapter, added the Bucks. So, clearly, he's going to show up. It is not a situation where Dame is going to say, you know what, you guys should, should ship me to Miami. This is done. It is happening. He is one of the best fourth quarter players in the league. And now you have taken a big hole in the Milwaukee Bucks as far as putting a lot of weight on Giannis to make plays. Remember, he spent all that time with Hakeem Olajuwon this summer working on his post game and everything else. Now Giannis can become a 1A, 1B option in the fourth quarter because you got Damian Lillard being able to take shots from the logo. This makes things awfully interesting. Dan Devine. And here's the other part of it, too. The one guy who you could say, in theory, would guard a guy like Damian Lillard in fourth quarters of playoff games. That guy, Marcus Smart, he got shipped off to Memphis. (laughs) Who's going to be guarding him in playoff games now? Malcolm Brogdon, if he's still there? We've got a problem (laughs) in the Eastern Conference. We've got big problems. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. Obviously, the uh, health permitting is the big caveat yes. hanging over all of that and all over, over so much, you know, everything uh, it, with so many of these teams, especially that are doubling down on veterans, doubling down on guys that have got you know some of their best basketball behind them. But it, you, if you're and and the the defensive point that you're making when you were saying the the issue about like the guy that you would have guarding him, the guy that the Bucks would have had guarding Damian Lillard is the guy that they just shipped out for him. So they're going to have a problem in terms of point of attack. Uh, defense and try to figure out what you need to do there. They also maybe have the best infrastructure to support a weaker point of attack defender there because you've got Lopez as, as a you know defensive player of the year caliber center at the back line. You've got Giannis as maybe the best weak side rim protecting defender and help defender in the league. Um, you've got Middleton who, who went fully healthy. He had lost a step defensively last year. It'll be interesting to see how much of that was the knee. If he's fully healthy, he has been a really good perimeter defender in the past. There's length and there's some options there that uh, new head coach Adrian Griffin. Oh, by the way, uh, Merry Christmas, Adrian Griffin. You get your first head coaching job. You get Giannis Antetokounmpo and you get Damian Lillard. Like not a bad way to walk into your first gig, right? Although the flip side of that present is the pressure is never going to be higher than you are expected to win a championship right freaking now. That is the window. That is the timeline. That is the horizon. And that is the expectation in, in Milwaukee. But yeah, the, it, you put you put you uh, put the Bucks now in a conversation where if they are healthy, they have to be considered. If not, you know, it's it's them in Boston, as you said. It was probably them in Boston, as we talked about, uh, you know, the last couple of years. Um, but Boston is gonna is going through their own dramatic shift in terms of bringing in Chris Stapps Porzingis for Marcus Smart, moving uh, Derek White into the starting lineup. I think he's probably your answer to that question. Who's trying to guard Dame in that situation in a playoff game is probably Good Derek luck. White. Um, you've got Jalen Brown coming back on the biggest contract in NBA history. You've got Jason Tatum trying to set himself up for the Supermax again, you know, coming next summer. There's a lot to figure out in terms of the, the reorientation of the way Boston has played on the fly. You've got Philly with the giant James Harden question mark hanging over their head. And then mm-hmm. uh, Kyle <clears throat> Newbeck of Philly Sports, and you mentioned the, the Sixers in the Drew Holiday conversation. He reported earlier this afternoon that uh, the the Sixers are interested in trying to acquire Drew Holiday. Obviously, be a robust mark a robust market for him, but Philly's expected to see what it would take to reroute him. Um, obviously, grew up you know started his career in Philadelphia. It would be a perfect fit next to Tyrese Maxey. 
between next to Joel Embiid. And the, you know, the, then the machinations of, but what if the Clippers want to get involved in the Drew Holiday conversation instead of the James Harden conversation? Like now the dominoes start to fall in a very different way. Um, but I think the starting point, the tipping point of all of that is Milwaukee might just be knocking things over. That's, that's maybe where the, the dominoes start tipping over. Well, two things that came up for me when we brought up Drew Holiday, who once again, I will say, is not a minor piece in this at all. Absolutely. Yesterday, Dan, he said, I want to spend my entire career, the rest of my career, in Milwaukee. About and the next that. day, and the next day his ass gets traded. So whenever <laughs> we talk about player empowerment and we talk about all these things run amok, remember something like this happening, right? Because for as great of a job as John Horse did in pulling this deal off, and we would all do it 10 times out of 10. You understand why some guys say, hey, I got to look out for myself here, because if it's me or the organization, the organization will choose itself every time. So if it's me or the organization, I have to choose myself every single time. The flip side to that, and I, I think this is really curious because I'm very curious to see how this all plays out in the future. Dan, there was a lot of backlash about Damian Lillard wanting to go to the team that just reached the NBA finals. How dare you want to go to the team, just one team, and it's a team that went to the finals. You're just jumping on the heat bandwagon. Never mind. Running from the grind. Said, He's running from the grind. Right, running from the grind. Never mind after they said that the heat weren't even that good and they didn't have the talent and everything else, but they went to the finals, and now you're saying that the heat is some you know personnel juggernaut and you're trying to jump on them. What do you say now when Damian Lillard goes to the team that had the league's best record or the best record in the Eastern Conference last year, that won the championship Two years, short, a short two years ago in 2021. Is it Miami hate? Because that's what it seems to me. It seems like there's a Miami backlash of they always get the free agents. They always get their guys. But Damian Little is going to objectively a better team with a also, better number one player, correct? And qui quiet as it's kept, that's not true of the Heat. You go back through the recent history. I mean, back when Gordon Hayward was the number one guy on the market, didn't get him, didn't get Kevin Durant when he was the number one guy on the market, didn't get Giannis when it looked like he might be uh, hitting free agency, you know, on and on down the line. They got Jimmy Butler, but they got Jimmy Butler as part of that kind of weird uh, everything imploding in Philadelphia and the sign and trade where somehow, you know, through God's grace, I guess it was Josh Richardson and a sign and trade was really all you needed to do to get Jimmy Butler in the door. But the recent history, the most recent history of the Miami Heat is that they've gotten their guy. This is, but this is not altogether unfamiliar to Pat Riley and Andy Ellisberg and, and company down there where, yes, just because they've got the market, just because they've got the no state tax, just because they've got the glamour brand and because they've been to the two finals in the last four years, that is a shift. It has, it, there was a time with the big three Heat, there has been this current time, but in the middle, there was a lot of time where it was like, we're trying to figure out how to make a, you know, a dollar out of 15 it was, it cents. Was, it was a lot of Dion Waiters and Hassan Whiteside stuff going over there. A lot and, of Dion Waiters. And, arguably and too much. Arguably too much. I know, arguably too. It was too much. <laughs> and when Jimmy Butler first signed with the Miami Heat, they said Jimmy Butler is going to go, you know, 30 win Jimmy. And he's yep. going there just to retire. So, so everybody has to be careful about dancing on the grave of the Miami Heat or dancing on the narrative of, oh, we don't want to see Damian Lillard going from, you know, the 12th seeded or 13th seeded Portland Trailblazers to a finals contender because that's where he just landed. Absolutely and no, right. And nobody, at least from what I've seen so far, and granted, it's in the immediate, immediate aftermath of it, Dan, nobody's saying, man, Dame shouldn't be there. Dame is running from the grind. No, they're saying that's a great move for Dame. That's a great move for the Milwaukee Bucks. You but know I what think I mean? It's, I think it's two reasons to that. I think one of them is if he had gone to you know, New York, L.A., Miami, you know, insert your glamour city team there, your warm weather or huge market or whatever team there. That's one thing. Milwaukee is the kind of place that never gets free agents, right? It is a, you know, Midwestern. It is a cold weather city, as you have lamented many times in conversation. Um, and, and it wasn't the team he said he wanted to go to. So you can at least wipe, you can wipe some of that away by saying the guy didn't get exactly what he wanted. He didn't get the market he wanted, which Quiet as again, quiet as it's kept, that does happen fairly frequently. And like, you know, the Kyrie Irving didn't want to go to the Celtics. Kawhi Leonard didn't want to go to the Raptors. You know, it, it, we not necessarily always see. It's all guys, this stems around Anthony Davis. This starts with Anthony yes, Davis. That's the pivot point in this conversation. And everybody just associates every player with how ugly and how public 
that was in 2019. And it was public and it was yep. ugly, but it doesn't apply to every single player in every single situation here. And I think, unfortunately for Dame, if to me, Dan, if there was one player who had, don't say the right, but if it was there was one player who I felt like could have picked his shot after 12 years in one spot and nobody would say boo, I would have thought it would have been him. Because if you remember correctly, and I'm, I think I'm a little older than you, possibly, but you got kids, so that could age you like an extra 10 years. Yeah, man, I'm, like, I'm in dog years at this point. It's, it's ugly. Yeah. It's ugly over here. I remember Kevin Garnett being mm-hmm. a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves and everybody just hoping and wishing that Kevin Garnett would just go to a contender. Yeah. And then poof, the Boston Celtics became this ready-made contender when they traded the Poo Poo platform. Nobody had a problem with Kevin Garnett going to the Celtics without them giving up Paul Pierce, adding Ray Allen, keeping Rajon Rondo, keeping Kendrick Perkins. Not After 12 years of twirling away, now all of a sudden we want to find religion with Damian Lillard. I, that makes me feel a little queasy. Just a little I hear queasy. You. I, th- I think that some of that is just like, the media ecosystem in 2023 is dramatically different than the media ecosystem in 2008, right? Like if there was constant Twitter, constant, you know, uh, you know, every other social media and this like the volume, the fire hose of takes of responses of vitriol in all capacities, I think maybe KG would have been on the receiving end of something a little bit different. And Dame gets that now. And especially Kevin Garnett at that point, at least in terms of the public reporting that I can recall, it wasn't like KG says it's Boston or bust, right? And like the old, I'm old, and like Will is having his agents steer him there and they're right. telling other teams he won't show up and yada, yada, yada. So there was a little bit more on that side of it. He wanted to go to Finks or LA, if if we remember correctly on that. And he wound up, Boston wound up swooping in, which happens. Yeah. Um, and, and, so, and good on Milwaukee for swooping in, right? And not just saying, hey, Miami, you put us out and we're going to just let you take Damian Lillard right from underneath our grubby fingernails. Good on John Horse for coming right in there and doing that. The, the important thing to remember is that po- player empowerment really is superstar empowerment. So Drew Holiday, as you know, impactful and important a player as he's been, he doesn't get to punch his ticket or call his shot. But when Giannis Antetokounmpo says, I want this, this to happen, the organization says, well, we are going to bend over backwards and do everything possible to make it happen, up to and including trading away a guy who was an integral part of your championship team. So Giannis is that kind of rainmaker. Damian Lillard is that kind of rainmaker. And that's this is the partnership that we now wind up with, that we see ourselves with. The interesting point on Drew Holiday, and I, I'm going to see, there's, as you said, many tentacles, a million wrinkles here. Drew has a $37.4 million player option for next season. So anybody trading for him, uh, once to get into that conversation, is going to be either making a rental and trying to sell themselves on him for after that, or banking that they are going to put him in a situation where he's going to want to extend off that deal a few months after arrival, which is what he did when he first got to Milwaukee. So if you, you'd imagine it's got to be contender, sort of contending team or bust, or a situation where he feels comfortable enough like, uh, yeah, I, I can see myself being here, you know, into my mid thirties and to like the sort of the back nine of my career. Um, but guys that are like all defensive team, you know, and, and again, you, you mentioned earlier, maybe defensive player of the year caliber players who, who never wind up getting that uh, that recognition because guards rarely do who have the championship pedigree, who are pretty selfless offensive players who don't need to be a 30 percent usage guy and, and dominate the mm-hmm. ball to make a contribution. Drew Holiday is a phenomenal fit for so many different organizations. And so now if you were the kind of the kind of team that was like, say, hypothetically in Philadelphia, where they say, don't look at the at the roster uh, in August, judged by the roster in April, you might have found an opportunity to get somebody that that sort of reloads you there for the, you know, another championship run at a time when you maybe thought that there weren't so many options. So uh, I think the, the where Drew goes, what his sort of long term prognosis is, and then also what Phoenix or oh, sorry, what Portland can get for him, because that's the like we have half of a deal for the Blazers. And we should probably talk about them at some point because they mm-hmm. walk away with the former number one pick in the draft uh, to pair with their you know bevy of young guards as they all try. They're trying to figure out what the next step is. But they also have like another big hand to play or big card to play as they look to sort of round out that asset profile. I think they're in a pretty fascinating position right now. Here's another thing to point out, because we're going to wrap in a couple of minutes. Giannis last year led the league in usage. 
I don't know when you consider maybe the way that this body is ever so slightly starting to break down. They played 63 games last year, played 67 the year before. So you're missing you're missing around 15 games a year. And you missed critical playoff games in that first round series against the Miami Heat. And you're and you're that high of a usage. Like we think of James Harden in usage. We think of Luka Doncic in terms of usage. We don't think of Giannis in terms of usage. If the Bucs were able to get in front of this and say, hey, Giannis, we're going to save your body for the short term. We're going to save your body for the long term. We're going to save pressure off of you, practical pressure, in fourth quarters of critical playoff games where you don't have to be the guy staring down the barrel of literally a, a one against five where you're just driving down the lane and hoping that you're getting around the guy. And if, and if you get fouled, then, you know, roll the dice. You've got a guy that can take and Dame, assuming he's healthy, that can take so much pressure off of Giannis. Subsequently, so much pressure off of Chris Middleton to make those plays. Remember, Chris Middleton's a guy that scored a forty that gave you a forty ball in the NBA Finals game, and they needed every bit of those forty points mm-hmm. against the Phoenix Suns that day. Last point as we as we wrap up, Dan. Two years ago, we looked at the Phoenix Suns. And we looked at the Milwaukee Bucks and that really, really compelling, really good NBA final series. Dan, we never would have thought that those two franchises would have morphed in the way that they've morphed since then. Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, now in Phoenix. Damian Lillard, now in Milwaukee. Nothing lasts forever in a whole bunch of different ways. So if you've got a championship window, your best bet, especially with luxury tax aprons, draft picks, salaries escalating your best bet is to go all in and that's what it looked like the milwaukee bucks did thousand percent and the the speed and the pace of the league has been accelerating and accelerating year over year and it's never been faster than right now if you are all in you've got to keep doubling down and eventually you're going to go bust but you know what at least you gave it a gave it a good shot when you had the opportunity to Giannis is the kind of guy you do that with the Phoenix believes that Devin Booker is the kind of guy that you do that with. That's why they've made all the moves around him from KD to Bradley Beal to now uh, moving off of DeAndre Ayton, bringing in Yusuf Nurkic and uh, a whole slew of other sort of uh, reserve players. I think Grayson Allen is a shooter for them. I think is really interesting, could open some things up. Nasir Little, when he's been healthy, was an interesting two-way wing in Portland. So they're, they were trying to sort of rebuild the rotation. We saw how they were uh, kind of, they wound up being a two-man team by the end of that series against the the Nuggets in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, they're looking to sort of rebuild and, and reload there. Um, there's this, it's, yeah, this is going to be, you know, it's like a spider web crack that, that spreads out and the, the ripples kind of go, uh, reverberate far and wide. I'm going to be really interested to see where it goes. But, um, the biggest thing is when you have this kind of player, you go all in over and over again. And that's what Giannis Adetokounmpo is. And that's what the Bucks have decided to do. And they just shook the whole table about a week before we go for training camp. It's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. Where I was going to be for media day has completely changed <laughs> um, <laughs> as a quick aside deandre Aiden, really curious how things wind up with him mm. yusef nurkic very curious how things wind up with him the suns got four players basically for one like we knew that depth was going to be a problem for them if nurkic is healthy maybe he's a better fit with everything that the suns are doing with the blazers they're looking to spin off drew holiday for more long-term assets so joe cronin this has been a odyssey, an odyssey of the past few months. Damian Lillard excited to go to Milwaukee. We here are excited to bring this emergency pod here with you. <laughs> that is the great Dan Devine petting his pit dog or pit bull that scares the living shit out of me because <laughs> me and dogs don't get along. He's a friendly and, guy. I promise. I promise. Yeah, He's not going to bark yeah. anymore. He's not barking on Mike anymore. That's the most important thing. That's that's true. That That is true. Uh, and one day we will get a smoke signal from Miami because Pat Riley will come out uh, blowing blowing some serious smoke. I would love to be in Miami <laughs> on media day to hear one thing. Ev- one thing. One thing. Real quick on that: Go the ahead. smoke is going to be coming from Pat Riley's ears because this has been the rivalry in the East of the last few years: is Bucks and Heat. And the Heat go and they eliminate the Bucks in round one this time. And then what do the Bucks do? They go slightly. 
Yeah, they exactly. They play the big joker. They take that. They take that book down. And now the Heat's got to go. We don't have our starting backcourt from the finals anymore. What do we do with that? Also, if there's anybody in the league that's going to be comfortable operating in that set of circumstances, got to figure it's Eric Spolster who all of a sudden gets to go. Oh, I get to pull whoever guys I want off of ten days in the G League and start making a finals team out of this. Perfect. He's got to be in there like chopped and the, uh, pulling things out of the cover and the the cupboards and the pantry and everything, trying to figure it all out from here. I can't wait. Eric Spolster would much rather have Damian Lillard. <laughs> let's, let's just let's just end that there. He would much rather he's have a sicko. He's a sicko, it. though. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yes, you're probably. Right. You're probably and right. I, Eric Spoelstra is the best coach in basketball. And he would much rather have Damian Lillard, <laughs> as, as, as would I, because I'd much rather be in Miami in June. But it looks like I'll be in Milwaukee. But that is Dan Devine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the great John Gennaro walking behind the glass on us, and don't forget Ron and Evan putting those videos together that you guys see. Thank you, gentlemen, Jake and Dan, with a new episode of No Cap Room. That will be tomorrow to dig in deeper with the trade. You know that Jake is going to have his little nuggets from the cubby holes that he peeks into <laughs> and finds little things out. So be, don't be don't be afraid to go and tap into that. Until next week, until you hear from us again, Media Day will be upon us. The NBA season is back. Everybody be safe.